Namo Bhutaya, Namo Ratanataya, blessings of the Noble Triple Gem. And uh, my greetings to everyone from our Aranyabodhi Awakening Forest Hermitage on the Sonoma coast of Northern California. I'm Bhikkhuni Tata Loka Terry. And I'm glad to join you today for this celebration of International Bhikkhuni Day on the auspicious full moon, 2605th founding anniversary of our Bhikkhuni Sangha. And I want to share my Anumodhana and thanks to the Mahabodhi Society of India in Bodhagaya for hosting and organizing this International Bhikkhuni Day uh, celebration and commemoration. Uh, and also to Venerable Bhikkhuni Liufa Viditadama Mahateri for moderating today. Also my greetings to all the Venerable Bhikkhuni Sangha, Venerable Bhikkhu Sangha, and all Dhamma friends around the world. So uh, I, have, uh, I have something to share here. I'm going to try to share a screen and I'm not tech savvy, so I may get some support in doing so, but let me try now. Is it working? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm not able to. Just a moment, please. Replay. Aha. So, uh, Venerable Bhikkhuni Dr. Liu Fap Viditadama Terry suggested that it would be good if today I would speak about the history of the Theravada Bhikkhuni Sangha in America, as not everyone may know about that. So, I'll be sharing with you about this topic. So, in the early days of the Theravada Bhikkhuni Sangha in America, even before that, uh, Buddhism came to the American West in the 1840s with Chinese immigrants and to Hawaii with Japanese Buddhists in 1889. Theravada Buddhist Anagarika Dhammapala visited the U.S. for the World Parliament of Religions in 1893, after which the first American became a Buddhist monk. In 1897, the first American woman, Countess Miranda de Souza Canavaro, a contemporary of Anagarika Dharmapala became a Buddhist nun with the name Sister Sankhamita. She lectured in Buddhism for three years in Sri Lanka, India, and Burma, and in 1900, at the turn of the century, returned to the United States and became active with the Mahabodhi Society of America. It was a deeply held aspiration of Anagarika Dhammapala to revive the Theravada Bhikkhuni order of Sri Lanka and South Asia. In 1926, Sister Sujata from England undertook Samaneri Pabaja in Sri Lanka at the Abhinavarama in Kalutara in India, becoming the General Secretary of the United Buddha Society in Bangalore and in 1937, Sister Vajira from England, the only child of English Baron Sir Ernest William Robinson, became the first English woman to undertake the Ten Precepts with the Mahabodhi Society in Sarnat, India, at the Mulaganda Kuti Vihara, some 40,000 people turning out for the occasion. She was Dharma friend and companion of Sister Damadina from America who undertook the 10 precepts likewise. These were the first generation. Later in the 20th century, in the 1980s and 1990s, about a century later, both Asian American and Euro American women in Theravada traditions began to receive both Samanari Papaja with Lao and Sri Lankan monks in the USA and full bhikkhuni ordination offered by the Taiwanese American Fogongshan community. By the mid to late 90s, further women in Theravada traditions began to receive full bhikkhuni ordination back and forth between America and India. In 1995 in California, a Vietnamese American Theravada bhikkhuni received full ordination at International Buddhist Meditation Center in Los Angeles. In 1996, there was the great 
ordination of 10 uh, Sri Lankan bhikkhunis in Sarnat, BC Patane, with the Mahabodhi Society. In 1997, again in California at the International Buddhist Meditation Center, I was ordained then and there. In 1998, again in India and in Bodh Gaya. Sri Lankan monks, Venerable Dr. Havampola Ratanasara Mahatira, my late most venerable bhikkhu preceptor, the late Venerable Panila Ananda and Venerable Walpola Piananda Mahateros, as well as Venerable Henapola Gunaratana, known affectionately as Banteji here in the United States. All of these Sri Lankan monks here in America played very important roles. In the 21st century, American bhikkhunis who ordained in Asia, especially originally in India and in Sri Lanka, slowly began to return to America in the early 21st century. By 2005, the North American Bhikkhuni Association was founded, and the first Bhikkhuni Vihara in the Western United States, Damadarini, that's my community here, was inaugurated. In 2006, the Alliance for Bikunis was launched, offering support for Bikunis in both North America and internationally. In 2007, the first Theravada Bikuni Patimokha recitation was held, formally acknowledging the existence of the Bikuni Sankha Theravada in North America. With the 2,600 Buddha Jayanti, Theravada bhikkhunis here in North America began themselves giving seminary papaja to inspire aspiring candidates in USA here uh, for the Buddha Jayanti anniversary. Bhikkhunis, Theravada bhikkhunis from Thailand, from Sri Lanka, from USA gathered together to give precepts to a large number of Cambodian women and girls for the Buddha Jayanti. These were the first bhikkhuni given uh, seminary pabajas in the United States at the time of the Buddha Jayanti. Before that, only bhikkhus gave the seminary ordination here. In 2009, bhikkhuni preceptors and teachers traveled from US to Australia to offer the first Theravada bhikkhuni ordinations in Australasia, and the first American bhikkhuni preceptor was appointed. That's me. Not long after, in 2010, the first all Theravada dual bhikkhuni ordinations were held in USA, here where I am now, at Aranyabodhi Awakening Forest Hermitage in Northern California. Not long afterwards, in 2010, Theravada bhikkhuni ordinations also began in Southern California at the Dharma Vijaya Buddhist Vihara, supported by Venerable Walpola Piananda Mahatero, who is also present for the first 1996 bhikkhuni ordination in Sarnath, uh, supported by the Mahabodhi Society. And uh, this was together with the Sri Lankan bhikkhu Sangha. Since this time, the seminary Papaja and Bhikkhuni ordinations began to be held regularly in USA, supported by both Euro-American and Sri Lankan-American Bhikkhuni preceptors who were themselves ordained in the 1996 and 1997 ordinations in India. Some of our Bhikkhuni preceptors here in North America, Bhikkhuni Pavatini Upajaya, the Bhikkhuni preceptors who you see here are from Sri Lanka and from Myanmar and also of Euro-American heritage. Currently in America, about half of Bhikkhunis are of Asian heritage mostly from the Theravada countries of Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Burma, and about half are of Euro-American heritage, whether born in USA or immigrants from Europe. Native American, African American, and Hispanic American bhikkhunis are still rare, but they are slowly increasing in number. The first Native American bhikkhuni received her bhikkhuni ordination here at our Aranyabodhi Hermitage in 2010. There are not yet any large bhikkhuni monasteries in North America with 20 or more bhikkhunis, but there are several smaller bhikkhuni monasteries and hermitages, mostly in California, with the majority of bhikkhunis in small satellite viharas. 
There are no state level issues of recognition or legality with regards to Theravada bhikkhuni ordination in USA as there are in South and Southeast Asian Buddhist countries. However, there are the prevalent issues of recognition brought into the USA with the bhikkhus and Buddhist people of Theravada cultures who have immigrated to America. Generally, the Sri Lankan Buddhist monks here are most supportive, but also the Theravada Buddhist monks of other traditions are supportive as well, at least some of them. Americans wish and need for bhikkhunis. There's a strong wish for bhikkhuni teachers in North America. For more than 10 years, invitations to bhikkhuni teachers have always greatly exceeded the availability of those teachers. From the time of the founding of the first Bhikkhuni Vihara in the Western United States, Dhammadurini, just a moment. I'm just having a, a technical support issue. <laughs> Uh, never mind anyway, from the time of the founding of the first Bikuni Vihar in the Western United States, um, people have contacted Damadrini exploring entering monastic life or further ordination as a Bikuni. Uh, the main hindrances to their being able to do so have been number one, a shortage of material support to accommodate the aspirants. And number two, a shortage of qualified bhikkhuni teachers to give training and give leadership. Up till the return of the bhikkhunis, that is the bhikkhunis who went to Asia to ordain and then came back to the U.S., there had not even been well-established places in the United States for eight or ten precept nuns in Theravada Buddhism. People were not used to supporting and valuing nuns in Theravada Buddhism, with the notable exception of the most venerable late Ayakema and some Siladharas from Amaravati in England. Nor were people used to having Theravada women renunciates as teachers. All this changed with the return of the Theravada bhikkhunis who ordained in Asia. A big shift in the culture began. Slowly, but ever increasingly, both bhikkhus and lay supporters began to become aware of and increasingly appreciative of the bhikkhuni sangha. There is a strong wish for bhikkhuni teachers in North America, and slowly the number of qualified and capable bhikkhuni teachers in America is growing and the bhikkhuni sangha is spreading. Bhikkhuni teachers like our late most venerable bhikkhuni Kusuma from Sri Lanka and venerable bhikkhuni Damananda from Thailand coming to visit and teach in America has been a big boon for us. We need more qualified and skilled bhikkhuni teachers, both domestically and from around the world, to teach Buddhist ethics, meditation, and wisdom of the Buddha's Dhamma here in America. International collaboration between bhikkhunis, both East and West, is a powerful force for good. After almost two years of lockdown and not being able to receive new aspirants or give bhikkhuni ordinations here, this International Bhikkhuni Day, our Dhammadurini Bhikkhuni Sangha, in collaboration with the bhikkhunis of Aloka Vihara Forest Monastery here in Northern California, was very happy to be able to give both Samaneri Papaja and full Bhikkhuni Upasampada once again on September 19th, 2021, in commemoration of International Bhikkhuni Day. We hope you will rejoice together. Thank you very much and anumodhana to all organizers and participants. Namo Ratanataya. Blessings of the Noble Triple Gem. Shadu, 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 shadu.